The Philippines is shaking, and it's not stopping. The ground has trembled almost every day in recent weeks. From late September to mid-October 2025, the Philippines was rocked by a series of six powerful earthquakes above magnitude 6, shaking regions from Cebu to Davao and across Mindanao and the Visayas, killing more than 80 people, injuring hundreds, and leaving communities across the archipelago in ruins. Scientists are watching in alarm as seismic stations light up from north to south, tracing a wave of unrest rippling beneath the islands. But what exactly is it warning us about? The Philippines sits at the heart of the Pacific Ring of Fire, where continents collide, volcanoes are born, and some of Earth's greatest earthquakes erupt. Yet even for a country accustomed to shaking, the current pattern is extraordinary. The quakes are not confined to one fault or trench. They're firing off in multiple directions, signaling deep and complex forces at work below. Could this be the prelude to a long-feared megaquake, or merely the Earth's way of releasing tension before the next calm? Let's find out. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video, as it's the best way to support this channel. Few nations stand on a more dangerous foundation than the Philippines. It lies directly on the Pacific Ring of Fire, Earth's most active seismic and volcanic regions that produces 90% of the world's earthquakes and most of its active volcanoes. But unlike Japan or Chile, where the plate boundaries form a relatively simple line, the Philippines occupies a tortured zone known as the Philippine Mobile Belt, a tangled cluster of microplates trapped between two giant tectonic forces. To the east lies the Philippine Sea Plate, a slab of oceanic crust subducting westward beneath the islands. To the west sits the Eurasian Plate, sliding in the opposite direction. The Philippines is the battleground between them. Over millions of years, their collisions have created a chain of mountain ranges, deep sea trenches, and fault systems that stretch across the nation like cracks in shattered glass, creating one of the world's most intricate and unstable tectonic regions. Along the eastern flank lies the Philippine Trench, plunging over 10 kilometers deep, one of the fastest moving subduction zones on the planet, converging at about 10 centimeters per year. This trench, capable of generating magnitude 8 or higher earthquakes and tsunamis, extends north into the East Luzon Trench, threatening the island's eastern coasts. To the west, another deadly subduction zone mirrors it, the Manila Trench, where the Sunda Plate pushes eastward beneath Luzon. Scientists fear this trench the most. It sits dangerously close to Manila, a metropolis of more than 13 million people. A full rupture here could generate both catastrophic shaking and a tsunami across the South China Sea. Between these trenches lie smaller but potent systems, the Negros Trench in the Visayas and the Cotabato and Sulu Trenches in Mindanao, the source of the deadly 1976 Moro Gulf tsunami. Cutting diagonally across the country is the Philippine Fault Zone, a 1,200-kilometer strike-slip system stretching from northern Luzon through Leyte to Mindanao. Like California's San Andreas Fault, it produces large horizontal movements that tear the crust apart, spawning quakes such as the 1990 Luzon disaster. The Philippines, quite literally, is built on shifting ground. Every trench, every fault, every island is part of a living system that is constantly moving. It is not surrounded by danger, it is the danger. The history of the Philippines has been defined by earthquakes and tsunamis, each generation enduring the wrath of shifting tectonic plates beneath the islands. In 1645, the Great Earthquake struck Luzon with a magnitude of 7.5 flattening Manila and nearby towns. The capital's fragility was exposed again in 1863 and 1880, when quakes along the West Valley Fault reduced churches and colonial structures to rubble. In the south, the Cotabato Trench ruptured in 1918, generating a tsunami that devastated Mindanao, followed by an even greater disaster in 1976, when the Sulu-Cotabato Trench unleashed a magnitude 8.0 earthquake and a 9-meter tsunami that killed over 8,000 people. The pattern persisted. The 1990 Luzon earthquake 
claimed 1,600 lives, and the 2012 Negroes earthquake triggered deadly landslides. From Luzon to Mindanao, the story repeats. The ground breaks, the sea rises, and the Philippines reminds the world it sits atop one of Earth's most active fault systems. In September 2025, the Philippines entered what scientists describe as one of its most intense seismic phases in decades. The sequence began quietly enough, but by October, the entire country was shaking. On September 30th, a magnitude 6.9 earthquake struck just offshore from Cebu, originating along a thrust fault connected to the Negro's Trench. Its shallow depth, barely 5 kilometers, made it particularly destructive. Buildings collapsed, bridges cracked, and power lines snapped. Over 70 people lost their lives. The aftershocks rolled for days, and seismologists noticed something strange. Instead of fading, activity began to spread north and east. Ten days later came the strongest quake yet, transforming a series of tremors into a nationwide emergency. On October 10th, a massive magnitude 7.4 earthquake struck off the coast of Davao Oriental in southern Mindanao. It originated along the Philippine Trench. Within hours, a second earthquake, a magnitude 6.7, erupted in nearly the same spot. Tsunami warnings prompted coastal evacuations as meter-high waves reached shore, while power outages, landslides, and hundreds of aftershocks left at least seven dead and dozens injured across Davao. But the unrest didn't stop. On October 11th, a magnitude 6.0 earthquake struck Caraga, farther north along the Philippine Trench. Then, on October 13th, a magnitude 5.8 earthquake hit Bacolod and Cebu, likely a reactivation of the Negros Fault Zone. Between October 14th and 17th, a series of magnitude 4.9 to 6.1 earthquakes shook South Cotabato, Visayas, and northern Mindanao, many occurring on inland branches of the Cotabato Trench and the Philippine Fault Zone. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology described it as a regional stress redistribution, with multiple fault systems shifting under immense pressure. The pattern was unmistakable. The entire Philippine crust was shifting as one. The sudden surge in earthquakes across the Philippines is no coincidence. Large quakes alter stress on nearby faults, which can trigger new ruptures in surrounding zones. The October 10th Davao Megathrust Earthquake, one of the strongest in years, disturbed the stress field across the entire Philippine mobile belt. As the Philippine sea plate pushes westward at nearly 10 centimeters per year, that immense pressure shifts into nearby systems such as the Negros, Cotabato, and Philippine Faults. Scientists also suspect deeper processes at work. GPS readings point to slow-slip events, deep, silent movements that gradually load stress until it's released in sudden bursts. The 2025 swarm may be part of one of these larger cycles. Climatic factors may play a role as well. Prolonged monsoon rains and typhoons can increase pore pressure in fault zones, reducing friction and temporarily softening the crust, which makes it more susceptible to slip. The Philippines has endured unusually heavy rainfall this year, further loading already strained systems. In essence, the 2025 swarm reflects both long-term tectonic buildup and short-term triggers, the Earth slowly releasing centuries of stored energy. The surge of earthquakes shaking the Philippines may be the prelude to a far greater disaster. Recent activity suggests that stress is spreading across the nation's most active fault zones, a warning that the crust may be nearing a major rupture. The southern Philippine Trench, off Mindanao's east coast, is of greatest concern. Geological records show it can unleash earthquakes exceeding magnitude 8.5 to 9.0, generating tsunamis that could inundate Mindanao, Samar, and Palawan within minutes and claim tens of thousands of lives. Farther north, the Manila Trench poses an equally grave threat. A rupture reaching magnitude 8.0 or higher could devastate Metro Manila collapsing up to 40% of buildings and crippling infrastructure across Luzon. The Philippine Fault Zone is also capable of magnitude 7.5 to 8.0 quakes and has shown renewed activity. 
With earthquakes now occurring almost daily, scientists warn the nation may be entering a new phase of tectonic upheaval, one that could reshape coastlines, displace millions, and become one of the deadliest disasters in Philippine history. In a country as seismically active as the Philippines, preparation is the only true defense. Philippines has expanded its seismic and GPS monitoring networks, feeding real-time data into alert systems that can issue warnings within seconds of a major quake. Tsunami readiness has also improved. Coastal drills, sirens, and collaboration with the USGS, Japan Meteorological Agency, and Pacific Tsunami Warning Center have strengthened early response. Public education campaigns teach citizens to drop, cover, and hold on. Yet challenges persist. Rural areas still lack reinforced infrastructure, and aging buildings in cities like Manila and Cebu would struggle to withstand a major event. Despite these advances, the recent swarm has made one truth clear. The Philippines remains on edge. The ground moves daily as tectonic plates grind beneath the islands, slowly building toward the next reckoning. The nation may be better prepared than before, but not enough for what is coming. In the Philippines, earthquakes are not anomalies. They are a way of life, and the next great one may already be on its way.